Welcome to Research Business Daily Report, made possible by RBDR's exclusive community at the crowdfunding platform known as Patreon.com. You are invited to visit Patreon.com forward slash RBDR, where you can find out where you can help us and we can help you. I am Bob Letterer. Our compatriot and media research guru, Bill Harvey, has some extensive thoughts today about validating psychological measurement in the research world. He points out that several positive and worrisome issues have been associated with merging psychological and other elements of research in the quest for better research results. Bill? I'm uh, happy to see that there is uh, a lot of activity in psychological research within our industry, a big upswing, and I think that it's destined to stay with us and to be a long-term trend. Um, Therefore, it's important to think about how do we validate this and uh, how do we use it, how do we structure it in our minds as researchers, how do we make an initial uh, decision about whether we want to have a supplier or a new supplier come in and show us their stuff. Um, If it's psychological, then I'd say, you know, give it an extra chance, but maybe not. Um, What if it's questionnaire-based? You know, here's here's where uh, we know as an industry that 95% of decision-making is subconscious. That has been proven. Been proven over and over again. Uh, We know about brain Uh, activity and inactivity and what percent of the brain is engaged in a given process. Uh, It's been 40 years now that we've been doing research like this and it it all points at uh, questionnaire data being suspect more so when it's psychological in nature, when we're asking people their psychographics. Simmons has 600, 700 different psychographic questions and uh, when I was consulting for them a couple of years ago, they um, very openly, uh, Stephen Millman, a wonderful researcher, did, um, as I had suggested, uh, explanations of brand usage based on these psychological measures. And it surely found that there were many of those question items that were highly predictive of usage of specific brands. And then there were many that weren't. Questionnaires about psychological aspects are definitely um, not as good as measuring behavior. If you can detect behavior and if behavior can be passively measured and if that can lead you to psychological insights. Television viewing, people who watch certain programs, based on the programs they watch, we can accurately predict what their psychological traits and states are. Uh, That's what Driver Tiggs has has done uh, with third-party validation from Nielsen Catalina, Simmons, a wonderful new company called 605 that's kind of a super TRA. Uh, so uh, that's one kind of behavior. Another kind of behavior that we're finding can be predictive is social media behavior. If you have a company that's really psychologically adept, like Stat Social, whom I've mentioned here before, those are examples of companies who are measuring s- social media behavior in a way that's deeply psychological. And uh, we're able to accurately predict driver tags from the stat social social media data. Uh, then there's other interesting and promising measurements, certainly website visits. That's an indication of a degree of psychological information. Uh, and then uh, there's a great company called Samasio uh, that I'm very interested in that is creating word clouds from the text that people consume on all of the sites that they visit. So. Uh, we believe that those are good predictors because, or potentially good predictors of psychological states and traits uh, because they're behavioral and not questionnaire-based. Finally, um, one, one uh, caution is demographics, when used to fuse psychological data that have, for example, been taken from a questionnaire nationally, and, and now you want data on each person in America and you team up with Experian, Axiom, whomever, a new star, whoever it might be, who has good data down at the household level. Um, if it's demographic data, beware, because if you're looking at demographic data as a prediction of psychology, you're falling into a classic trap of uh, prejudice and uh, pigeonholing people based on their race, age, income, uh, 
other things that are convenient, demographics, Simmons shows have only 6% explanation of or predictivity of uh, things like brand usage. And prediction of psychology is even more subtle and nuanced than prediction of brand usage. So uh, I would beware of using demographics as a fusion hook uh, to try to get at psychology. That's your Research Business Daily Report, which is made possible by members of our exclusive community on the crowdfunding platform Patreon.com. RBDR is produced thanks to the interest and the support of many of you who are regular viewers of this video series. And as such, we always acknowledge those who are our RBDR patrons, particularly those have, who have just signed on. And the newest patron of note is John Lewis, whom we are thanking today. Please join our community yourself and become a patron at patreon.com forward slash RBDR, where you can select the level of patronage and comfort that suits you personally and professionally. Have a great research day, and we will see you back here tomorrow.